Let's talk about the components we're going to need for this project. First up is the Arduino. I'm going to be using the Uno just for this demonstration, but when I put this into a project box, I will be using one of these, which is an Arduino Nano. And that's just because it's smaller, it'll fit nicer in the box, and it'll be a bit more power efficient than this one over here. We're also going to need a relay. Make sure that it's a relay that can handle the amount of amps that your pump draws. The pump I'm using is a 3 amp pump, so this is going to be more than enough. This can handle 10 amps. So we're going to need a photoresistor, and this is what detects whether the sun is up or whether your lights are on. We're also going to need a 10k resistor. We're going to need a breadboard, and we're going to need some DuPont wires, which helps connect everything together. I'm going to use white for ground and I'm going to use red for 5 volts. Next up we're going to connect the relay. This needs positive and then it needs ground and then it needs a signal. For the relay we need digital pin and I'm going to use pin 6 over here. There we go. So the relay is set up. We need to take the photoresistor and we're going to put that into these pins over here right on the end. We're going to be putting one end of the resistor to A2. The other end of this needs to go to power. Lastly, we have this resistor. It's a 10K resistor. We're gonna use that to connect the ground to the signal wire. There we go. And that's it, we've set this up. Now we need to put a program on it and see how that works. This is the code for the ebb and flood basics. So the, the build that we've just put together and I have made a more advanced version of this as well. And I'll talk about that in a separate video. Up here where I'm highlighting is where all the settings that you can change. The first two are the most important, flood interval and flood duration. This is the interval between how often you want to actually flood your flood table. And this over here, that's 3.6 million milliseconds, which is equal to an hour. So I've put some common millisecond equivalents at the top there. The flood duration is how long you want the pump to be on. So pretty much how long it takes for your pump to fill up your flood table. And what I would recommend you do is, you know, fill up your flood table with your grow medium and then run your pump and see how long it takes to get to the level that you want the water to be at and time it and basically just put that figure in here in milliseconds. This variable over here is just a fail safe and essentially it's what's the longest acceptable delay between flooding and this makes sure that even if your lights have failed for whatever reason if you are growing indoors or let's say it's a really cloudy day and there's not enough sunshine to actually activate the light sensor then it will make sure that it still gets a flooding every however many milliseconds so this means that no matter what happens at least once every 12 hours my flood table will get flooded. The light level, because we've used a 10K resistor between the photoresistor and the ground, this means that I have a pretty consistent view of what figures I should be getting here. All you need to understand here is the higher the value, the more light you're getting. And the value is out of 1023, so that means that the brightest that it can get, direct sunlight, it will be up around the 1023 mark. So don't set it there because then your flooding will probably never really happen. We can see here, I've just given some indication, indirect sunlight is 850. So this is in my room with the light coming through the window, not directly shining on the photoresistor. Then I get a figure of about 850. Normal indoor lighting, your standard lighting is around 650. If you're having proper grow lights that are going to be um, shining on this photoresistor, it's going to be more like 900, 950. So the light level delay. So this is important because obviously clouds can come over or let's say uh, at night time, if you're going to check on your plants and you switch on the light temporarily, you don't want the system to think that the sun is up. So this is a delay. I have it set at 60 seconds. I probably would set it at five minutes. And what this does is it checks the sun's come up or your lights are switched on. It'll wait this amount of time. And if the sun is still up at that point then it will continue doing what it needs to do if not then it'll go back to being whatever the previous state was 
these two here, these are just the uh, pins that we used for either setting the relay or for doing the light sensor itself, which is this analog two and the relay is on pin six. These here are just variables that I'm using in the program itself. So let's have a look down here. We are just initializing the relay itself. So we're just making sure that that pin for pump pin is on output and we're setting it to low so that the pump is off at startup. And then we go in here. The first thing we do is we're reading what the light sensor says. So we're getting a read from the light sensor and that's gonna dictate a lot of what happens further down. This section here is just checking for the sun, whether the sun is up or whether your lights are on for a specific period of time. So the delay we set earlier, which I said should be around five minutes, is checking whether the sun has been up for that period of time and it will actually reset a counter if that's not the case. So that's all that this bit of code is doing. And then over here, this is what actually decides whether the pump needs to be on or off. And that uses information that we've specified up top here that there is going to be used down here and this is the last bit of code which basically turns the pump on or off this is just the longest delay between flooding this just checks you know the last time the pump was on is it longer than this period of time if so then we need to switch the pump on to flood the table for the predefined period of time which will then happen over here Let's upload this now to the Arduino and uh, what we're going to need to do is just change some of these parameters here just so we have something to actually look at. So the flood interval we'll give that, let's make that one minute and the flood duration we'll make that five seconds and the light level we'll leave that as is, that's fine and the light level delay, let's change that to 20 seconds send that to the Arduino. So let's take this back to the bench and let's see what it does when we power it up. So we've loaded up the Arduino Uno with the code and it's time for us to test it and see how it works. So I'm just gonna power it up with a 12 volt source here and we should have within 20 seconds this thing turning on. there we go it's turned on and it'll turn off again in five seconds time and then it'll wait another minute before it turns on again and there we go it's turned on again and that'll be on for five seconds and then it'll turn off again so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover it up as if it's now gone dark so that should in another minute's time, it shouldn't switch this on again. So let's just leave that for another minute and we'll see what happens next. So it's now been over a minute and this hasn't turned on again. But when I remove this, so we're simulating the sun coming up, it'll be 20 seconds and this will then turn on again. And there we go. So you might ask, why am I using a light sensor? Why am I not just using a timer? If you're outdoors like myself, the sun will actually come up and go down at different times uh, of the day as the year goes on. So as you get closer to the peak of summer, your days get longer, the sun comes up earlier by a couple minutes every day. And uh, after the peak of summer, obviously the days get shorter. When you're using an ebb and flood, you want to be able to flood your system as soon as the sun is up and that's when you start your your timing so if you want to flood every four hours you want your first flooding to happen as soon as the sun is up and then four hours later your next one the system that i've built here enables you to just plug it in and leave it be and it will automatically adjust to the sun going up sun going down if you are doing this indoors this will still be useful right it'll st still do the same job but it might not be as important because your, your lights are going to be on a timer anyway. So this is a quick sneak peek at my more advanced system, which I'm calling Tide. And uh, you can see there's a few other elements going on here. There's a rotary knob over here. There are two buttons and there's an LCD display. So we have a menu where we can set what the different settings are here. So we can see the light threshold. We can see 
here's the, the duration that you want the backlight on. So let me just make that stay on for a bit longer. Let's make it two minutes and let's save that. There we go. So backlight now is 120 seconds, so two minutes. So basically we can change all these settings that you have to change in the program. We can change it here uh, directly on the system uh, using, you know, it's gonna be in a nice little box and it just makes life a bit easier really. So I'm still working on this one. When I'm finished, I will do a video on it and uh, we'll show you how I put this all together. So let's finish the video up with showing you what I'm doing with the basic version of this that I showed you in the beginning of the video. What I've done is I've just made a small project box, makes it nice and neat. We have the power input, power output. I'm running this off a 12 volt battery that I have charging on a solar panel. This one here is for the output, so this is for the pump, and uh, pump just plugs into there. On the top here, we can see there's the light sensor, so I've just drilled it in there and used some hot glue on the back just to make sure that it stays in place. So let's take a look inside here. What I've done is I've used some shrink tubing just to cover these components up so they don't short circuit anywhere. This is the relay that I'm using. Over here, this is a buck converter. So because I'm putting 12 volts in to this, I need to bring it down to a level that's useful for my Arduino Nano. And I'm using a buck converter to do that. I could use the Arduino Nano's power converter, but it's not very efficient. This one's far more efficient. I've measured this out. I only use 20 milliamps when this is powered on and we aren't using the pump relay. So 20 milliamps is fantastic for me, especially when I'm running it off a solar panel and a battery. I've got to make sure it's, it's as, as efficient as I can make it. So this is just a small buck converter that I'm using. Uh, it's very efficient. It's set to five volts and that's powered directly to the unregulated pin on the Arduino Nano. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, this is nice and simple. I will release the code. I will put it up on my website, chillychump.com and uh, I'll put a link to it down in the description below. I'll also put a link to all the components that I used for this specific build. And look out for a future video where I talk about the more advanced version once I get that all nailed down. Until then, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again on the next video. Bye bye for now. They're called